Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here, breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Monday, February the 10th. Uh, we're going to go through Monday's nine-game slate, go position by position, talk about the players uh, that stand out to me the most looking at this slate the night before. I'll give some of my early thoughts, what I like for DraftKings, and we'll talk about guys I like over on Yahoo as well. Uh, just before we do get started, as always, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like down below. Um, if you are new to the channel, if this is your first time checking out a video on my channel, thank you so much for clicking on the video. I do greatly appreciate it. If you would, please hit that subscribe button. I do upload a lot of NBA videos, a lot of NBA content. Uh, lately, I've been getting videos up seven days a week, and that's something I'm going to try and start doing from here on out. Uh, so I'm probably going to have NBA videos up every single day. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell as well, uh, so that way you'll get notified. You'll never miss out on any of my new uploads. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Also, you can do that. Link down below is my Twitter account, at DFS by Noah. I'm very active over on Twitter, so if you want to give me a follow, if you ever need to contact me, feel free to do so uh, over there. Also, I do have a lot of exclusive content going up on Patreon throughout the week. I do post NBA content Monday through Friday, and lately I've been getting stuff up on the weekends as well, just trying to post more content on Patreon uh, for those that are subscribed over there. You can check out the Patreon link down below and see everything I have to offer uh, get access to my updated core plays, get access to our Discord chat where we're talking through the slate uh, pretty much all day throughout the day. Also, Monday through Friday, I do write an article that's usually 8 to 10 pages long, breaking down the slate, talking about all my favorite plays at each position. I will have my article posted uh, in the afternoon, usually posted like 2, 2.30 Eastern time, somewhere, uh, somewhere in that time frame. So if you want to check out the Patreon, that is linked down below. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at Monday's nine-game slate. Uh, this is our final week of games before the All-Star break. Uh, the All-Star break, the All-Star break starts on Friday, so we have games today. We have games on Tuesday. There's games on Wednesday, and then we have a two-game slate on Thursday. And then after that, there's no games till next Thursday, which is going to be the I think it's the twenty, I think it's the twenty-third. Or no, not the twenty-third. I think it's like the twentieth. It's, the, it's next Thursday. It's like the 20th or the 21st. That's when the uh, the All-Star break resumes. So uh, we'll have four videos this week, Monday through Thursday. We'll cover the games, and then we'll have a week off. And I'll be back next Thursday once the All-Star break is over. So let's look to finish the week strong, try and get a, a, some good profit in on today's slate. We'll start off at point guard, talk about this position, what I'm liking at the top here. So we do have LeBron, most expensive point guard, 10900 in a matchup against the Suns. Uh, now, this is a matchup I like quite a bit for LeBron, but I don't think I'm going to pay 10-9 for him on the slate, especially when you have Trey Young for cheaper. Uh, Trey Young's just a guy that I've been playing a lot recently. He had a big game on Sunday against the Knicks. I did like him a, a bit for tournaments on that slate. I mean, that game did go to double overtime, but even at the end of regulation, I think Trey Young still had like 60 draftings points or somewhere close to that. He still had a really good score even at the end of regulation. Ultimately finished the game with 73 DK points and double overtime. Played 48 minutes. This is a back-to-back, -back, but Trey Young's a young guy. I mean, he's like 22, 23 years old. I'm not really sure. He's a young guy. He's not going to be limited by any means. He's going to be out there for 36 to 38 minutes today if this game is close, which I think this game should stay close against the Magic. It's not the best matchup. The Magic are solid defensively. They do play at a pretty slow pace, but 10,100, I mean, that's just too cheap of a price tag for Trey Young. This is a guy that has 60 to 70 point upside every time he steps on the floor. And you've seen that in his last 10 games. I mean, he has multiple, uh, four of his last 10 games, over 70 draftings points. He has one of those games, one of those games, 64 DK points, 56 DK points. I definitely like Trey Young as a spin up option today. Uh, right now, my favorite spin ups are probably him. Uh, we'll talk about AD. I really like Anthony Davis in this spot. I think a guy like, uh, like Nikola Jokic, you could still look to. Vooch is in a really good matchup, so I like him quite a bit. Uh, there definitely could be some value today. Right now, we do have some pretty big injuries to watch. Uh, Giannis is questionable, so we know who to target there. If he winds up out today, guys like Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, Ersan would be a really good value. Uh, so that could make it easier to get to a guy like Trey Young. Also, DeAndre Ayton is questionable. If he were to sit, somebody like Czech Diallo, uh, Czech Diallo would probably be one of the best value plays on the slate, especially with how thin the Suns front court is right now. Still no Aaron Baines, still no Dario Sarge. I assume Czech Diallo starts today if Aiton does not play. So that's a big injury to watch that could open up some value. We saw from Minnesota with D'Angelo Russell out Saturday. Guys like Jordan McLaughlin, uh, Malik, Malik, uh, Malik Beasley, 
Even Juancho Hernan Gomez put up solid games, and all those guys are relatively cheap today. Uh, so a lot of potential value. I think it should be pretty easy to get to Trey Young, and I do like him as one of the better point guards to pay up for on today's so, slate. Like, I do prefer him over LeBron, especially because he is a little bit cheaper than him. But then in the mid-range, I think there are some good plays here. Tough matchup for, uh, for Devin Booker, but 8K, still a little bit too cheap of a price tag for the like upside that Devin Booker has. I mean, put up 50 DK points in a blowout win against the Sun or against the Rockets. Only played 30 minutes, still had 50 DK points in that game. Tough matchup uh, against Denver on Saturday night. Still wasn't bad. I mean, he had 40 DraftKings points in 37 minutes. Right now, we know Devin Booker is locked into huge minutes. As long as the game is close, this game could blow out. I mean, the Lakers are a really good team, but if it can stay close, we could get 36 to 38 minutes from Devin Booker today. And at 8K, definitely in play if you want to go there. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, I also like quite a bit for a little bit less. So we finally saw him have a good game. Last game out against Toronto, 36 minutes and put up 49 DraftKings points. He had really been struggling recently with Kyrie out. As a starting point guard, Dinwiddie's going to be a guy that's going to be very productive. It was kind of weird seeing him struggle like that against the Warriors and against the Suns. But he finally bounced back last game with a big game against the Raptors. I definitely like him today at 7,900 on DK. I think he does stand out as one of the better options in the mid-range at point guard. You could go to Booker for 100 more. Um, if Jimmy Butler plays at 7,900, he would be an option. He's uh, questionable. I, or at least I assume he's questionable. He did not play Sunday. The Heat are on a back-to-back. -back. We'll just kind of have to wait and see there. Fred Van Vliet could be a good option again if Lowry's out. You do have De'Aaron Fox in a pace-up spot against the Bucks. So there's a lot of viable options in this mid-range. But I do like Dinwiddie quite a bit. We'll take a look at his numbers this season. With Kyrie off the floor, he does get a big boost, as you would expect. Uh, lately, Karis LeVert has been playing very well. Uh, so I assume kind of one of the reasons that Dinwiddie has struggled the last few games is because of how well Karis LeVert has played. But we saw last game against the Raptors, both of those guys were able to produce. I think LeVert had like 40 DraftKings points. Dinwiddie had 49. But you can see this season with Kyrie off the floor, these are the two guys that just get all the usage. I mean, LeVert has a 31% usage rate. Dinwiddie has a 32% usage rate. Dinwiddie averaging 1.22 fantasy points per minute with Kyrie off the floor. LeVert averaging 1.12. I love both these guys today. Uh, we'll talk about Dinwiddie on Yahoo. I think he really stands out there. I think you can, or uh, we'll talk about LeVert on Yahoo. I think he really stands out there. You can also go to him on, or you can go to him on Yahoo too. We'll talk about LeVert when we get to small four. Uh, $31, I think Dinwiddie is firmly in play. We're going to talk about some of these guys I like, though, that are a little bit cheaper. But for now, on DraftKings, I think Dan Woody's the guy that really stands out the most in that mid-range. But there's a lot of viable options, like Fox, Van Vliet, we talked about. If Lowry plays today, it's a great matchup for Kyle Lowry, and he's 7,300, so you can look to him. Uh, Karis LeVert, we'll go ahead and talk about him now since he is point guard eligible. He's really been playing well as of late with Kyrie out. Got 37 or, or not 37, 32, 27, and 33 minutes the last three games. 45, 39, and 51 DraftKings points. Just been playing at such a high level. No longer limited. They're giving, or they're giving LeVert 32 to 34 minutes in competitive games. I assume that's what he plays today. As you saw, I mean, over a 30% usage rate this season with Kyrie off the floor, averaging over a fantasy point per minute. I think at his $24 salary on Yahoo, he's my favorite play to go to over here from the Nets. I think he's just way too cheap, especially at a small forward position that's not nearly as deep as point guard. There's really not a lot of guys I like at small forward today. It's usually always a gross position. There's some cheap plays that could be viable, like if Jimmy Butler remains out, you could definitely play Duncan Robinson at $12. Maybe if Kyle Lowry's out again, you could go to OG at $11. Uh, at the top, if Giannis doesn't play, I mean, Chris Middleton's going to look like a really good option at 34 but DeRozan at 36, I don't really want to go to against Denver. Kelly Oubre in a tough spot against the Lakers. I don't know if I really want to go there. So I think Karis LeVert at his Yahoo salary is clearly one of the best options at the position and honestly one of the best plays overall on the slate, just given that price tag. I think on DraftKings at 7K, I mean, he's not out of play by any means. The dude's been playing at such a high level recently. He's getting more usage with Kyrie off the floor, getting the minutes, uh, which is what we, we'd like to see. And if you guys remember, especially... Uh, dating back to last season, whenever Karis LeVert was healthy, I mean, this is a guy that had a ton of upside when he was healthy, could score, can really contribute in all categories. He had triple-double upside, uh, so I definitely like him today. More on Yahoo, but on DraftKings, he's still in play for me as well. He does have small forward eligibility on DK, which makes him very appealing. At the same salary, though, you do have Jamal Murray, who I like quite a bit, especially with Will Barton still out. Uh, Barton, we know, is going to be out today. Michael Porter Jr., also going to be out. 
Last two games, I mean, Jamal Murray's just been playing really well. 43 minutes, 35 minutes, 42, 54 DraftKings points. Getting huge minutes right now. Against the Spurs, like, this is a matchup you would normally avoid, but the Spurs are actually not the same defensive team that they used to be. On the season, they do rank a 24th in defensive rating. They don't play at that fast of a pace. They are middle of the pack, 14th in pace this season, so it's going to be a slow-paced game, but the offense is going to run through Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, especially while Will, Mar- uh, while Will Barton remains out. So I think at his 7K salary, he is still in play for me, and I do like him quite a bit as well. Him and Levert, I think, are my two favorite point guards in that price range. Reggie Jackson, though, I think we need to talk about. I do like him quite a bit for 6600 I think he might go a little bit overlooked today, especially with his price tag on the rise. But while Derrick Rose remains out, Derrick Rose is doubtful today, not expect to play. While he remains out, Reggie Jackson is going to continue to get 32 to 34 minutes a night. And the last three games with Rose off the floor, 48, 36, 38 DraftKings points, 34, 33, 31 minutes. Not the best like pace game against the Hornets. I mean, I don't expect this game to be very, very high scoring. We don't have a total yet. I'd assume it comes in probably around like 210, 205. So it's not going to be a high total. The Hornets play at a slow pace, but they are very bad defensively. Uh, they do rank 28th in defensive rating this season. I do like targeting some of these guys from the Pistons, and although their price tags are starting to come up, I still think they're in play. I still think Reggie Jackson's a good option at 6,600. I really like him on Yahoo, though. I think he, that's that's where he stands out the most. He's only 23 bucks over here. Still remains probably 5 to $6 too cheap on Yahoo. Like He should be priced around guys like um, Jamal Murray, some of the other point guards in that range, like Brogdon, 27, Graham, 28. Like Give me uh, Reggie Jackson for $23. Give me the savings, and I'll take him over those guys. You could argue maybe to go to Murray at 27, but for now, I do like Reggie Jackson quite a bit. Obviously, if Giannis were to sit and not play, then you have Eric Bledsoe at 25, who would become a great option. But for now, Jackson looks like my favorite guy to go to. That's just an early look play. Like I said, guys, at the beginning of the video, I do have a lot of updated content over on Patreon. Once we get some of these injury updates on Monday uh, in the afternoon, I will provide a lot of updates over there. In my article, I'll give some updated core plays, what I'm liking uh, once we get some of these injuries. But then looking at other point guards just in this price range, not really much to stand out. Good matchup for Markel Fultz, so I do want to mention him. He's pretty cheap on Yahoo. I think he's $17 over there. So if you want to play Fultz on Yahoo, I think you can do that. If Jimmy Butler remains out, I think guys like Kendrick Nunn, Gordon Dragic are firmly in play. If I had to play one, I think I would rather go with Dragic. He's just a more productive player. Probably not going to play as many minutes, but Dragic, this is a guy that's going to be productive when he's on the floor. He can score. He can get assists. Uh, can easily get you a double-double with the points and assists. So I do like him if Butler still sits. We'll have to wait and see there. Ricky Rubio has been pretty bad lately, but his price is way down to 5600 on DraftKings. So did want to mention him as just a guy that's too cheap. There's still plenty of upside for Ricky Rubio, just in my opinion. And he's getting big minutes. If it's a close game, Rubio's been playing about 32 to 34 minutes in close games as of late. Um, if D'Angelo Russell remains out, Jordan McLaughlin, 5300 you could definitely consider. Had a monster game last game with Russell out. Did get the start, played 37 minutes, and had 48 DraftKings points. I wouldn't expect that kind of production, but when this guy has got minutes, like he's been productive, even coming off the bench, getting 20 to 22 minutes, he was still productive off the bench. If Russell were to sit, I assume he gets big minutes again. Even in a tough matchup against the Raptors, I still think McLaughlin's in play today. If Kyle Lowry remains out, you have Terrence Davis for 4800 who is still a really good option at this salary. Got 30 minutes last game against Brooklyn with Lowry out, did get the start, had 35 DraftKings points, was very productive. I'd project him for similar numbers today, and at 4800 he looks like a really good option as well, another value play you could consider. But under 5 k that's probably it for me in terms of punt values. Like, Victor Oladipo is really cheap, but we just don't know what his production is going to look like. Hasn't really been that productive this season. Even getting 30 minutes, like, he still hasn't been that productive of a player. This is a good matchup against Brooklyn. If he's going to play 30 minutes today, I mean, he's not out of play at 4,200, but wouldn't be going out of my way to play him. Uh, Kai Bowman got the start last game with D'Angelo Russell no longer on the team. It seems like he's going to be the starting point guard moving forward, at least until Steph Curry gets healthy. Got 29 minutes, had 26 DraftKings points at 4,200. Another viable option for cheap, but I think we covered everything down here. So let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard now. We'll talk about this position. So looking at guys here I haven't already talked about, 
Uh, Andrew Wiggins, 7,800 on DraftKings, pretty expensive price tag, tough to pay that price for him, but he did look really good in his debut with the Warriors Saturday night against the Lakers. He had uh, 42 DraftKings points in 31 minutes, shot 8 for 12 from the field, 3 for 4 from 3, 24 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 block, and 5 steals. Don't expect him to be that productive on the defensive end with those defensive stats, but it was good to see him at least get the shot volume. He took 12 shots. I expect he gets more minutes and more shot volume moving forward as he just comes becomes more familiar with the team. He's closely priced to guys like Devin Booker. You have Van Vliet for cheaper, who I would like again if Lowry's out. So I don't think he's going to be a guy I go to much on DraftKings. On Yahoo, though, I do like him quite a bit. He's $31 on Yahoo. I think if I'm going to play him, that's probably where I'm going to do it today. But we will talk about some uh, shooting guard plays I like for cheap on Yahoo. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons I won't pay up for Wiggins a ton today. But then other shooting guards, not much really stands out. Like Buddy Heald, I like this matchup a lot for him against Milwaukee. Uh, pace up spot, Milwaukee does allow a lot of three-point attempts just with how fast they play. Buddy Heald, I think, or he didn't have that great of a game against Milwaukee earlier this season, but he's been playing really well off the bench. Still been getting big minutes even coming off the bench. That's really helped his fantasy production just as of late. So at 6,600, he's not out of play for me. I still do like him. Uh, 25 bucks on Yahoo. I think you could also consider Buddy Heald over there. In the 5K range, though, I don't think there's really anything that stands out here. At least looking at this like the night before, nothing really catches my eye. So in terms of value plays, you got some of the guys I've already talked about. Like if Kyle Lowry's out, you have Terrence Davis. Uh, Terrence Ross, I think, is fine to go to at 4,900 and a pace-up spot against the Hawks. Mikel Bridges just continues to see big minutes. His production is going to be inconsistent, but at 4,800, if we're going to get 34 minutes from Mikel Bridges at that price, I think he's a fine option. Um, this is a back-to-back -back for the Jazz. Last time they were on a back-to-back, -back, Mike Conley did rest. So if Mike Conley were to sit today, I think at 4,800, Joe Ingles would become a very viable option at that price tag. Uh, Malik Beasley, though, somebody I want to talk about at this position. So we saw him get the start at shooting guard in his debut with the Timberwolves. They started McLaughlin, Beasley, Okoji, Hernan Gomez, and Cat. I assume if D'Angelo Russell remains out, then that's the same starting lineup they go with today. If D'Angelo Russell plays, then I would assume he just takes over uh, from McLaughlin as a starting point guard. It was good to see that Beasley played 30 minutes, though, in his debut with the Timberwolves. Had 48 DraftKings points. That was a tough matchup against the Clippers. But he was very productive. He did shoot really well from the field, at least somewhat well. I mean, he shot 53% from three, 42% from the field. But he took a ton of shots. I mean, 19 field goal attempts, 13 three-point attempts, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, and a steal, 48 DraftKings points. Don't expect him to be that productive today. But if Malik Beasley is going to continue, uh, continue to get 30 to 32 minutes in this offense, getting the shot volume, like when he was with Denver, he would put up big games when he got the minutes. It's just... Denver was such a deep team that they were they really didn't give Malik Beasley a ton of run because they had just so many healthy bodies. This is a totally different situation. Timberwolves are not nearly as good of a team. I think Malik Beasley is going to be a guy that gets 30, 32 minutes a night, if not more, moving forward. And at 4,500, totally viable if you want to go there on DraftKings. I think if I'm paying down at shooting guard, he's my favorite guy to go to. Really like him on Yahoo, though. Only 14 bucks. I think he looks like one of the better value plays at the position. Uh, you can go to him on DraftKings as well. I'm just not going to include him in the early core. Uh, but definitely could potentially be a guy I look to uh, later on when I give him updated core plays, depending on how some of these injuries shake out. Like if we don't get a lot of value today, if no value opens up, then maybe a guy like Malik Beasley uh, beco becomes a really good value option at 4500 It's really, he's just got a totally different role now. He's with a different team. He's starting. He's playing 30, 32 minutes. This isn't the same guy that was with the Nuggets getting like 20 minutes off the bench. Now that he's getting uh, more volume, just more opportunity, I expect him to be a very productive player. And while he's 4,500, might want to hop on him now because in maybe a week from now, he might wind up being five or 5,500, close to 6K a week from now. So yeah, I do like him as a value. But other than that, I think we covered all the shooting guard value plays, at least just skimming through the position, what I'm seeing the night before. So let's go ahead and talk about small forward now. So at this position, Chris Middleton, obviously a very viable option if Giannis winds up out today. If Giannis plays, probably won't be going to Middleton. Really don't see myself paying up at small forward unless I'm going to someone like Karis LeVert, who I talked about earlier. I do like Karis LeVert a lot. Middleton, though, would become a great option if Giannis winds up sitting. You, you guys obviously know 
he gets a massive boost with Giannis off the floor. But in the mid-range, not much stands out here. A really good matchup for Aaron Gordon, but at 6,400, really don't ever feel like I have to play Aaron Gordon at that salary. He's just not a guy that you feel gives you like massive upside. If he goes for 40 drafting points, sure, that's good at 6,400, but he's not breaking the slate. Like He just doesn't have that slate breaking upside. And at 6,400, I want a guy that maybe could break the slate, give me 45, 50 drafting points. And I just don't know if Aaron Gordon can do that. So probably won't even go to him, even in a good matchup. Yeah, really not much stands out in the 6K range. Going down here, uh, looking between like the 5K plays. If Jimmy Butler remains out, you can definitely go to Duncan Robinson at 5,200. He's still very cheap on Yahoo. He's still $12 over on Yahoo. So if, if I'm going to play him on one site, I think I would prefer him there. But he'd be viable regardless. Uh, Draymond was out Saturday and Eric Pascal started. I'm pretty sure Draymond's off the injury report for today, so don't want to go to Eric Pascal. Uh, Bruce Brown hasn't been nearly as productive as a guy like Reggie Jackson, but he is getting big minutes, especially while Derrick Rose remains out. With Rose out the last few games, 38, 33, 33, 35 minutes from um, Bruce Brown. At 5K, I mean, I want probably 30-plus DraftKings points from him for him to be like a guy I'm glad I rostered at the salary. Lately, he hasn't been doing that. I mean, just 27, 24, 23, 22 DraftKings points. That's not really getting the job done at 5K, but it's hard to consider him a bad play when he's getting 35, 36 minutes, especially against the Hornets, a really good matchup. So not out of play for me. I think I would rather go to guys like uh, Duncan Robinson if I can find the salary. You even have like Terrence Ross for cheaper. Derrick Jones Jr. should continue to get pretty big minutes as long as Jimmy Butler remains out so you could play him. If Mike Conley winds up resting on the back-to-back, -back, you have Joe Ingles for 4,800. So those are probably the guys I would go to over someone like uh, Bruce Brown. But that's probably it for punt plays, like really cheap options. I mean, OG, 3,900 is not a bad play. Got 29 minutes against Brooklyn. If Kyle Lowry rains out and we get 30-plus minutes, or 30 cl close to 30 minutes from OG today, at 3,900 in a fast-paced game against the Timberwolves, like he'd be a fine option to go to, but really not a guy I would like have my night ride on so yeah let's go ahead and talk about uh, some power forward plays now look at this position so at the top you do have Giannis here 11,400 against the Kings if Giannis plays today he's a fine option to go to not my favorite play by any means I think I'd rather save over a thousand dollars and play a guy like Anthony Davis I think I'd rather save and play Trey Young but there's no James Harden on this slate there's none of those other studs like Luke is obviously still out so Nobody has the massive upside that Giannis has on this slate, but I just don't know if I want to go out of my way to play him. I'd rather save $1,000, play a guy like Anthony Davis, 10300 against the Suns. I love this matchup for Anthony Davis. Not really sure who the Suns are going to use to guard him. Lately, they've been starting Kelly Oubre at the four, so I don't know if Kelly Oubre is going to guard Davis, if Mikael Bridges is going to guard Anthony Davis. If they put DeAndre Ayton on him, that's assuming DeAndre Ayton is able to play. But even if they put Aiton on him, I don't know who they're going to use to guard JaVale McGee. So this is a really good matchup for Davis. Whether it's one of those three guys on him, he should easily be able to win that matchup. Especially if it's Aiton. Uh, Aiton has been really bad on the defensive end this season and just overall never really been that good of a defender. If he were to wind up out, then it would most likely be Czech Diallo guarding Anthony Davis, which is easily a winnable matchup. We know this guy gets monster or massive usage in this offense. It's him and LeBron James run the show for the Lakers. Both these guys have over 30% usage rates or close to it. Everyone else is like 20% or lower. I mean, you have Kuzma with a 23% usage rate, but other than that, everyone else is 20.5% or below. 28.8% usage rate for AD, 31.6% for LeBron. AD is averaging 1.44 fantasy points per minute. Just elite numbers this season. Even playing alongside LeBron, he has still been an elite fantasy asset. At 10300 I think there's plenty of upside for him to go 6x value on this price. I would not be surprised at all if we get 60-plus DraftKings points from AD. One of my favorite pay-up options today, 10-3 on DraftKings. On Yahoo, $50 at Power Forward. Pretty closely priced to Giannis. Giannis is only $5 more. I think, given the savings, honestly, I'd rather play AD as well. I just think AD has a ton of upside in this spot. Wouldn't be surprised if he winds up being the high-scoring player overall on the slate. I just... I don't really know who the Suns are going to use to guard him, and kind of similar to what, to what we saw when they played the Rockets the other day. They just really had no answer uh, no answer for Anthony Davis in that game. Finished with 66 drafting points in 40 minutes, 32 points, 13 rebounds. Like, we could totally see him put up a similar line to that. 
uh, today. So love AD. Sabonis is in a really good matchup, but hard for me to play him over a guy like Davis. I think I'd just rather play Davis. I think with Porzingis, not on the injury report, going to play today. He is firmly in play at 8,400. Luka remains out, which solidifies Porzingis' monster workload. Uh, had a bad game, I think that was Friday night against the Wizards. Only played 21 minutes, but that was because of foul trouble. He was just picking up a ton of fouls in that game, could barely stay on the floor. Before that game, I mean, this was, this guy was putting up monster numbers. 56, 59, 60 draftings points with Luka out. The minutes have been there. His usage obviously skyrockets with Luka off the floor. His fantasy production much higher as well. And now the price has come down a little bit to 8,400. Rested on Saturday, so he should be a full go today. Really like Porzingis at 8,400. If I if you're not paying up for Anthony Davis, I think he is my next favorite payup option at power forward. But then a guy like Christian Wood, I think we need to talk about. Very expensive, 7,200 on DraftKings, but with his role now, with Andre Drummond no longer on the team and Christian Wood starting at center, playing 34 to 36 minutes, it's very hard to say like he's a bad play even at 7,200. Like I still have a lot of interest in Christian Wood today, even at this salary, especially in a great matchup against the Hornets. We know how bad this Hornets team is defensively versus bigs. I've talked about it all year. In terms of defensive rating, they're a terrible defense overall, 28th in defensive rating. Uh, looking at rebound percentage, they are one of the worst rebounding teams in the league. They rank 27th in rebound percentage. Uh, they play at a slow pace, but the, their bad de- or how bad they are defensively overall kind of makes up for that. I still have a lot of interest in Christian Wood. I think he is one of the better mid-range options at power forward. I think if we switch over to Yahoo, though, that's where Christian Wood really stands out. He's still only $24, which you could argue is anywhere from... 10 to $12 too cheap. Like Christian Wood should be like a $32, $34 player with his role now playing 35, 36 minutes, especially in this matchup. Just the last two games with Drummond and no longer on the team and Wood starting 47 fantasy points, 39 fantasy points, 35 minutes, 36 minutes. I have to assume he plays 34 to 36 minutes today. Probably going to score 40 to 45 fantasy points. He's going to be really chalky on Yahoo, but still hard to get away from him at that salary. Once he gets up to like $35, then it becomes a question of is he worth the salary. But while he still remains that cheap, I'll just keep rostering Christian Wood. Like, I'd much rather prefer him over guys like Ibaka, Aldridge, even Adebayo. I think I'd rather save and play a guy like Christian Wood for $10 less. So love me some Christian Wood on Yahoo and I think on DraftKings. Still firmly in play, even at $7,200. Uh, but then other power forwards we could maybe look to. Not much really stands out in the mid-range. Just looking at guys I haven't already talked about. So if we're looking for value here, I mean, there's really not much value that stands out either. Uh, Thon Maker's been starting recently. Had a decent game, or had the, the minutes were there last game against the Knicks. I know he got off to a really hot start. Had like 15 drafting points in the first quarter, but then he only finished with 19 DK points. But it was still great to see that the minutes were there. Assuming he continues to start, I'm not sure if Markeith Morris is able to play today or not. I think I could check that real quick. I think last I saw that was that Morris was questionable, but let me look. Oh, he's actually listed as probable. So Markeith Morris is expected back, which I assume means either one of Christian Wood or Thon Maker goes back to the bench. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably Maker, and then they'll start uh, Wood at center. Lately, they've actually been starting Wood at power forward, but... I have to assume they start or they keep Christian Wood in the starting lineup with how well he's played. Like moving him to the bench just wouldn't make a lot of sense. So that probably gets me off the thought maker then if Markeith is able to play. So really no interest in him. Yeah, it's probably it for guys like in the 4K range. Now when uh, now when we get under 4K, looking for really cheap options here. You do have OG who I talked about earlier. You could play, uh, but I do really like Juancho Hernan Gomez at only 3,600 on DraftKings. Very similar to Malik Beasley. This guy is just now in a totally different role than what he would than what he was in with the Nuggets. When he was with the Nuggets, I mean, some games he wasn't even getting on the floor. Most nights, though, he was getting like 10 to 12 minutes off the bench. First game with the Timberwolves, he played 27 minutes in the starting lineup and had 23 drafting points. Was pretty productive on a point per minute basis. I have to assume he continues to start at power forward. Tough matchup against the Raptors, but if we're gonna get 30 minutes from Hernan Gomez, if not close to that, I mean. At 3,600, this is a guy that can easily give you close to a fantasy point per minute. Even in a tough matchup, he does look like a very good value option. Like, he he didn't get priced up nearly as much as a guy like Malik Beasley did. I know Malik Beasley had a monster game Saturday, but Hernan Gomez still has big upside as well when he gets the minutes. And for 3,600, 
I like him a lot as a value play, assuming he does stick into the starting lineup. I think on Yahoo, you can play him over there as well. He's still minimum salary, only $10 at power forward, firmly in play as a value option. And then I guess we'll talk about one more guy. So with DeAndre Ayton questionable, if he winds up out, I assume Czech Diallo gets the start at center, which would make him easily the top value play on the slate. They really have no other bigs they could turn to. Aaron Baines is still out. Dario Sarge is still out. Uh, I think Cameron Johnson is playing. I know he was in on their last game. I'm not sure if he got hurt. I think I saw something where he might have got hurt in that game. But let me check that real quick. No, so Cameron Johnson's good to go. Played 24 minutes in that game. So, yeah. Maybe they start him. I don't think they would do that, though. But he probably would get more run if Aiden were to sit. But obviously, if Aiden's out, the biggest beneficiary is going to be Czech Diallo. I assume he would start, probably play close to 30 minutes, if not more. And for those of you that have played DFS for a while, you guys know that Czech Diallo is a great point-per-minute player. When he gets minutes, he can be very productive. 26 minutes, uh, just looking at his last 10 games, 26 minutes, 21 DraftKings points, uh, 24 minutes, 27 DraftKings points. Tough matchup against the Lakers, but the minutes would be there if Aiden sits, so... Don't forget about Czech Diallo. Hopefully we get an update on Aiton in the afternoon. This is one of the last games on the slate. It's a 10-30 game. So if we don't get any, any news before lock, that's going to be pretty frustrating. Just be ready after lock if Aiton winds up out. Get, get some Czech Diallo in your lineups. He's also minimum salary on Yahoo. So if Aiton were to be out, I would definitely prefer Diallo over a guy like Hernan Gomez. Uh, really, or It's good to see that uh, Diallo is power forward on Yahoo, so you don't have to use up one of your center spots to roster him. It's going to be really hard to get away from him if Aiden winds up sitting. But that'll just kind of have to be news. We wait and see on heading into Monday. Like I said, guys, a lot of updates I'll have posted on Patreon today. Uh, later on in the day, I'll have my article, my updated court plays, all that will be posted in the afternoon once we do get some of these injury updates. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about center just before we end the video. So at the top, you got Carl Anthony Towns for 10500 Nikola Jokic for 10200 Really can't go wrong with either guy. I did play on Saturday, uh, on Saturday slate, and I thought both I thought both these guys were a great plays Saturday night. Uh, Towns getting to face the Clippers without D'Angelo Russell was just going to see a ton of usage, and Nikola Jokic getting the matchup against the Suns. I love that spot for him. Towns had the better game between the two, but I like both guys a lot. Jokic is probably in the, the uh, a little bit of a better matchup, so I think I would give the edge to him over Towns, especially if D'Angelo Russell winds up playing. I think that's going to hurt Towns a little bit. So I do prefer Jokic if I'm going to play up or pay up for one of those two centers. But I'd probably still rank those guys behind like AD. I really like Trey Young. We talked about um, like Porzingis you could look to, Devin Booker, the Milwaukee guys if Giannis winds up out. Excuse me, if, if Giannis winds up out. So still don't expect either of the expensive centers to be core plays for me. Uh, if I do have to pick one, though, I think I'd side with Jokic. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, obviously a very big injury to watch. If he plays 9,300 against the Lakers, Doubt I go there, but if he's out, we talked about Czech Diallo. He would be a great value play. Nikola Vucevic, love this matchup for him against the Hawks. 8900 on DraftKings, though, is a very tough price tag to pay. I think I'd rather save $500 and play someone like Porzingis, even in a bet or even in a worse matchup against the Jazz. We know Porzingis is just going to get a ton of usage. Really going to just do all the heavy lifting for the Mavs. So I'd prefer him over Vooch. I think if I'm going to play Vooch, it's going to be on Yahoo. $36 at center. He looks pretty good at that salary, so I do like him over there. If Jimmy Butler remains out, you can definitely play Bam Adebayo. We talked about Christian Wood. I like him a lot still, even at 7,200 on DK. He's firmly in play for me. Abaka with Marc Gasol still out is fine to go to at 6,500. I don't mind him at all. Uh, Jared Allen's price tags come way down on DraftKings to 5,400. I do like this matchup for him against the Pacers. This is a pretty good spot. The Pacers are not that good of a defensive team versus Bigs. At least they have or at least they haven't been this season. They've allowed, I believe, the fourth or fifth most fantasy points to centers. So Allen's fine to go to. The minutes have been down, which is a concern. Only 23, 18, and 19 minutes the last three games. Uh, 23 minutes was kind of or kind of expected that to in a blowout win. I mean the the Nets won that game by 22 points, so kind of expect or Allen to be a little bit limited there. They beat the Warriors by like 40 points, so only 18 minutes. That was kind of expected, but. Only got 19 minutes against the Raptors, which was kind of surprising. Not sure if that was just because of foul trouble or if, or if they just wanted to, or if they just uh, decided to go with DeAndre Jordan over him. Regardless, though, I think this is going to be a guy that probably plays 
28, 26 to 28 minutes most nights. He's a fantasy point per minute player at 5,400. Firmly in play if you want to go to him. But I do really like Miles Turner in that price range. I think Miles Turner really stands out at his DraftKings price of only 5,100. Uh, so we know how good this matchup is against Brooklyn. This has been a matchup I've targeted all season centers against Brooklyn. It's been a pretty profitable one as well. I know Brooklyn's still really struggle to centers, allowing like the third, I think the third most fantasy points to centers on the season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, his minutes have been more secure a little bit than Jared Allen. I mean, Miles Turner, if he stays out of foul trouble at the game's close, he's getting probably 30 to 32 minutes most nights. Obviously, with Sabonis healthy, like Turner's not nearly as productive of a player playing alongside DeMontis Sabonis, but he will get some time uh, when Sabonis is off the floor, which is when he's the most productive. And at 5,100, there's still legit 6, 7x upside for Miles Turner at this salary. He has really struggled against Brooklyn this season, which is kind of a surprise. Only averaging 17 DraftKings points through two games against them, only 19 minutes through two games. I assume that maybe has to do with foul trouble. I think he actually got hurt earlier this season when they played Brooklyn. So I don't really buy into that. I assume if we're getting 30, 32 minutes from Turner today, he can easily give you a double-double, get 30, 35 DraftKings points, which is really good at 5,100. So he does stand out at center as a value option if you want to go to him at 5,100. I do like plugging him in as an early option or as an early core play, at least as of now. And like I said, guys, my updated core plays will be posted on Patreon about an hour or two before lock. If you want to get access to those, my Patreon is linked down below in the description. But I think that's it for center. I think we covered everything here. I really don't see any value plays that stand out, at least just looking at this late the night before. So I think that's it, guys. We covered everything. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. Hopefully it did help you. I appreciate you watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like down below. Hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. Click the notification bell so that way you do get notified every time I upload. Uh, also, if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter. Link down below is my Twitter account, at DFS by Noah. Also, link down below is my Patreon. If you do want to get access to all of my exclusive and or all my exclusive NBA content, my updated and in-depth content, I do provide a lot of that over on Patreon with my article, my updated core plays, uh, the Discord chat as well is available over on Patreon. So, I think that's it, guys. Best of luck tonight. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.